Hello, welcome back to another episode of Big Brain Blaze Boy Business Blaze. What's this channel called? Doesn't matter. It's brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace.com forward slash blaze for 10% off your first purchase. Blaze it up with Squarespace. Get an easy to make website today. Why not? More about them in a bit. Yes, 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 yes. The present also sucks. <laughs> not as bad as the past though, does it, Danny? Ah, crazy laws from around the world. I hope we get to, I mean, what's that one uh, lately? Wasn't Winnie the Pooh banned in China because Xi Jinping looks like Winnie the Pooh? I mean, allegedly. Please don't assassinate me with Novichok or whatever. <laughs> Please, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it, Xi. I didn't mean it! But I mean... But, but I mean... But I mean, yeah. But you, you, you do. Why is it... Oh, what happens here? Danny writes me a script. I shall add to the script. <laughs> Probably make it worse. Sam is going to sprinkle in some fine vintage memes. Hello. <laughs> Hello, G. Geperox, who just followed me on Twitter. You ever know that sometimes where it's like Twitter just insists on telling you about every. Like, most of the times Twitter shut the f up unless someone like who's got a mega amount of followers or is verified follows me. But sometimes it's just like, I'm going to tell you about every single person that follows you. And I'm like, brilliant. That sounds like I'm going to get interrupted constantly. Because I'm extremely popular. <laughs> Ah, why is it usually only celebrity figures that decide to give their children unusual names? Throughout my life, I've come across several different people called John or Laura or Peter, but I've never encountered anyone in real life with a name like Sylvester Apollo Bear, Cricket Pearl, Gravity, or Zuma Nesta Rock. Well, Danny, I have to say, well, wait, I've never met Danny, but when we eventually meet, I can introduce you to my child, Magic Spoon. <laughs> Maybe I just move in the wrong circles. Yeah, Danny, you do. All of my famous friends are crazy named children. <laughs> it's true, it's, it's not true. I don't really know anyone famous, like, other than like briefly meeting other fellow YouTubers at like conferences and stuff. It's like, I don't really know, no, I'm just like my friends are regular people. And it's kind of nice. Some have cynically argued that celebrities dish out strange names to their offspring purely to further their own celebrity, as they know that the daft name will generate fresh headlines. Yeah, that's so why I'm gonna name my son Cockface. What? It's so not to being quite, so, not being quite so cynical myself. I think it's more likely that most celebrities aren't choosing a name by the same criteria as the rest of us. Just kidding. Like my my kids, my one kids, and uh, soon to be second kids, have both have very regular names. They're just they're just regular popular names because I don't want them to get the shit bullied out of them. <laughs> Uh, not being quite so cynical myself, I think it's more likely that celebrities aren't choosing an, a name by the same criteria as the rest of us. Yeah, they get the book, the, the big book of celebrity children names. Most of us will be thinking about trying to avoid putting our kids through an entire childhood of torment and mockery, but as celebrity kids are more likely to be living in a protective bubble, their parents perhaps have the freedom to get a bit more creative. And that's why we hear about such distinctive baby names as Baby Ivy from Jay-Z and Beyonce, Apple Martin from Chris Martin and Gwyneth Paltrow. That's all Blossom Rainbow from Jamie Oliver. That's <laughs> all Blossom Rainbow. <laughs> Did you just choose three random girly words, Jamie, and be like, that's banging, ain't it? That's how Jamie Oliver speaks, right? No. Pilot Inspector. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Who calls their child Pilot Inspector? <laughs> From Jason Lee and Beth Reesgraf, I've never heard of either of you. Bear Blaze. <laughs> nice, can't be real, Kate Winslet. And Moon Moon Unit. What the fuck? I mean, I've heard of like Blue Ivy and sh or Baby. Wait, I thought it was Blue Ivy from Jay Z and Beyonce. But Moon Unit. Pilot Inspector. What sort of crack are you smoking? It's just like generic. Just going to the hardware store and call like, yeah, what's it, what's your kid called? Hammer Drill. Like, you're just choosing random words. Although moon unit sounds legit. Like what? Unit? <laughs> Do you smoke crack cocaine? Exactly. And Diva Thin Muffin, both from Frank Zappa. So this is definitely not a new thing. Frank Zappa's old and d or dead, right? I mean, he's he's made music a long time ago, right? I know it's easy to ridicule anything that doesn't sound a little different, but maybe we should be celebrating the idea of choosing unique, quirky, and genuinely meaningful baby names. Yeah, there's nothing more meaningful than, pi I mean, meaningful, technically correct, pilot inspector. It does mean something, someone who inspects pilots. <laughs> Moon units. Yes, I guess it could be some sort of type of units, like that, that, that planet is 17 moons. 
Okay. Instead of just choosing names that we think will sound ordinary and acceptable and non chortle inducing to everyone else. <laughs> if there was a kid called Moon Unit, I'm a 34 year old man and I would bully them. It says something, doesn't it? Um, that I'm a dick and also they're very, you know, susceptible to bullying. I mean, you could be like, you could be like, yeah, my dad's JZ all you want, but if your name is Moon Unit, Someone's gonna bu bu bully you. Look, Jamie Oliver, your kid, you might be Jamie, you're like, what's your, ha, oh, Petal Blossom Rainbow. Ah, is that even a real name? Be like, yeah, my dad's Jamie Oliver. You're like, no one cares, Petal Blossom Rainbow. I wouldn't have minded having a pair of twins and making them sound like a mysterious crime fighting duo. I would probably have called them something like Magic and Mystery, Sapphire and Steel, Whopper and Fries, or Stew and Dumpling. And I suspect this would have been, le I'd have been legally entitled to do that. If you're a citizen of somewhere like the UK or the United States, you can pretty much call your kid anything you want as long as it's not deemed horribly offensive. Oh no, there goes my name for my son. Cockface. One very rare case of a ban in the UK was a woman when a woman tried to name her baby Cyanide after the poison. Cyanide's quite a pretty word though for a poison, isn't it? Like, what's your name? Cyanide. Uh, cyanide Whistler. <laughs> The new mother from Pow... Oh god, it's in Wales. It's Powies, maybe? I don't care, Welsh people. It's like, Simon, why don't you learn to pronounce the Welsh place names? I'll tell you why. Because I don't give a shit. <laughs> I can't even pronounce place names from my own country. You know why? I don't care. I can pronounce Czech place names, though, because you know what? They have a f***ing phonetic language, where it's like, that's how the word's spelt, that's how it's pronounced. It's glorious. Like, people don't, people in Czech, they don't understand how mispronunciation can work, because it's like, why don't you just read it like it says? It's like, yeah, yeah. If only every other one country and language in the world worked like this, it'd be, a, we'd live in a society of harmony and bliss and non ragged youtubers the new mother from Pit, from powies in wales felt that cyanide was a nice name because as she puts it the name is linked with flowers and plants and was responsible for killing hitler and goebbels and i reckon that's a good thing wait hitler shot himself i don't know how goebbels died or goebbels how you're supposed to pronounce it no one cares the courts intervened to make sure that this never happens and that the mother was forced to consider a less controversial alternative like arsenic or petrol bombs <laughs> but i was surprised to discover that one of the countries with the strictest laws regarding baby naming is denmark for starters unisex names are completely off limits as each name is required to make the gender of the child explicitly clear Denmark. It's 2021, mate. <laughs> Come on. But the choice is severely limited anyway, as you're ideally meant to choose from a list of around 7,000 government-sanctioned names. If your desired name isn't appear on the list, you need to first seek approval from both the Ministry of Ecclesiastical Affairs. Why is there a Ministry of Ecclesiastical Affairs? Again, Denmark. It's 2021. Let's get the religion out of your government. Okay, okay. The Names Investigation Department at Copenhagen University to try and get your choice added to the list of legally acceptable names. This could be a long-winded affair, and only around a thousand sets of better of parents bother to make the effort every year, and up to 20% of those are usually rejected. 80% get approved, though? That's quite good. I, I, I mean, maybe there's the people who chose the name Dustbin Face. You're not even allowed to use creative spellings of more common names, and certain odd Old and noble Danish names are banned outright in order to protect their grandeur and stop peasants from sounding quite posh. <laughs> That's great. Imagine if it was like, yeah, 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 you can't call anyone Charles or William in the UK because they're reserved for our overlords. Apparently, protection is the idea behind the whole set of strict baby names, protection of Denmark's cultural heritage from odd names, different spellings, and by the sounds of it, any new original idea for a name. Denmark, what are you up to? <laughs> In an interview with the Irish Times in 2000, and Irish Times in 2004, Professor Michael Lersch Nielsen, the assistant professor at the Department of Naming Studies, you sound like a boring man. No offense, Lersch. Well, Michael Lersch is Lersch one of the acceptable names, Michael Lersch. <laughs> Daddy, chill. Revealed the challenges of his job, he explains, we're having difficulty with the name Jordan at the moment because it's used as both a boy's and a girl's name elsewhere. And of course, the Danish law wants us to separate boys and girls' names. We can't have a name on both lists. Jordan is also a geographic name. Wait, let me repeat this in a more accurate, uh, accurate voice of this man. We can't have a name on both lists. Jordan is also a geographic name. Uh, <laughs> let me write that down. What the hell is even that? He then pauses before adding helpfully, it's also the name of a brand of toothbrush. <laughs> Are you a real 
person, Michael. But the whole thing seems like a surprising violation of human rights, as it's quite shocking to learn that the Danish are so heavily restricted when it comes to naming their own child. You certainly won't find Sage Moonblood Stallone anywhere in Denmark. Oh my god, is Sylvester Stallone's kid really called Sage Moonblood? <laughs> Start, Sly. What are you up to? I never got the law! And your mum was a butt whisperer. Like, she looked at butts and told the future from looking at butts. That was sliced alone, right? I mean, damn. I mean, she's now dead, so she's not doing that anymore. Unfortunately. Uh, I mean, not fortunate at least just that she's dead. It's just fortunate that she's not doing the butt reading anymore, because obviously it's nonsense, allegedly. Um, and it's just one example of a flawed and rotten law which is still very much enforced today, despite the fact that most sane people would recognize it that it's a bit balmy. I'm aware that some of the recent business blazers have become quite dark, so on this occasion, oh my god, are we still in the introduction? I still say it'd be best not to focus on some of the more obvious and truly obscene laws, such as women's rights and, and legally permissible marital rape in the East. Instead, I thought we'd look at lemonade, illegal bellends. <laughs> <laughs> Notorious criminal mastermind Winnie the Pooh. Oh, please tell me we're talking about the Winnie the Pooh and it the, 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 in China. A lack of decency. Bearing in mind that Dubai is one of the very first cities in the Middle East to roll out the welcome mat for tourists, it's not surprising that the most populous city in the United Arab Emirates has developed into a thriving holiday destination. Tourists are flocking to Dubai to take in the beautiful beaches and sand dunes, gorgeous coastlines, stunning landmarks, unique architecture, and generally to soak up the culture. Wait, isn't it just a super modern city in the desert? Like, I know there's the old part of Dubai, which actually sounds quite interesting. But isn't the rest of it just giant hotels and, like, shopping malls and inside ski resorts? It's like my desire to visit Dubai is basically zero. I'm like, wait, so it's like Disneyland for adults? Because I went to Las Vegas and it was f horrible. I'm like, I don't like gambling, which I mean, so I guess that's why I didn't like Las Vegas. But I hear there's good restaurants, but I was too broke to go to them. So maybe I'd like Las Vegas if I enjoyed gambling or I had more money. <laughs> Maybe I should go back. I still don't enjoy gambling, but at least now I can afford to eat. But yeah, Dubai is like, why? I just, I, I don't need that. Like, why? Uh, but you also need to be very careful. You don't end up helplessly drowning in the very culture you're meant to be soaking up. The Muslim country has some strict laws on swearing in public, eating or drinking on public transport, making or spreading rumors, and driving a car that needs a good wash. <laughs> But the strictest law of all relates to public indecency. Most countries around the world are perfectly sensible laws on public indecency. No getting your c out. <laughs> what? No matter where you live, you're likely to be arrested for walking around the town square in the nude or having sex in your local branch of Taco Bell. However, go to Florida and you can absolutely guarantee that those things have happened multiple times everywhere on a yearly basis. But the problem with Dubai is that you're not allowed to display any kind of public affection at all, and this includes kissing or holding hands in front of other innocent citizens. The punishment for violating the code can be a fine, imprisonment, or deportation. I'd absolutely be like, please deport me immediately. Just send me straight to the airport. I'll pay the fine. I don't want to go to your weird prisons. I hate it here. I want to go home. And there has been a long list of cases in which unsuspecting or careless couples have been caught out by the law. An Egyptian man and a Moroccan woman were arrested in 2010 after a petrol station attendant informed the police they had both spent over 10 minutes together in the woman's restroom. Oh, shit. Who goes to, like, a Middle Eastern country and is like, yeah, let's have sex in the toilet? I mean, just... I mean, you know that they're more conservative, right? And you know that they have crazy laws. Like, who doesn't know this? Like, what are you up to? It's also another reason I don't want to go to Dubai, because I'd be like, I accidentally broke some law and now I'm getting stoned. <laughs> like, f*** this. Do they still stone people in Dubai? I know they do in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> it's another country I've got no desire to visit. I mean, Jesus Christ, guys. Don't do it. I mean, also, stupid laws. What the f***? But also, don't break them. Don't go there if you duck duck the wise. It's just a lose, 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 isn't it? Just don't. Do it! You'd think this wouldn't technically count as public affection, as I'm sure they weren't, there weren't many witnesses, but as well as facing charges of violating public decency, the Egyptian man was also quite bizarrely charged with cross-dressing because it entered a restroom for women. The cross-dressing charge was ultimately dropped, but the couple were fined $544 and spent a month each in prison? What? Before being deported from the country, I'd be like, can I just pay a larger fine, please? Please, let me, I don't want to, no, no! And one British couple were arrested after a local complaint that they had been kissing on the mouth in a restaurant and were also dealt a similar sentence. Holy sh Charlotte Adams from Essex was one of uh, the criminal parties involved and she was later warned other, she has later warned other tourists about how getting banged up in Dubai is far from a pleasant experience. 
shocking. Although, didn't Dubai or was it Saudi Arabia, one of those Middle Eastern countries, didn't they like lock up a lot of their autocrats or um, not autocrats, um, oligarchs, like their equivalent of oligarchs, or just like rich people? And they were like, where are we gonna lock them up? And they were like, Four Seasons? <laughs> it's like, Shit. That sounds all right, but I get the feeling that doesn't happen to regular people. It's like, can you imagine you get arrested, you go to prison, it's like, am I going to the Four Seasons prison? Like the actual Four Seasons hotel, which I'd just be restrained to, because that's actually nicer than my current hotel. <laughs> and they'll be like, no, 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 you're going to rapey prison. <laughs> oh, but there's a public display of affection. What did, what would that mean for the, I'll just have an infinite sentence then, won't I? She claims the stench hits you when you walk in. There's just a room filled with stained mattresses so close that they've been pushed up to the walls. There were a hundred women in there with two or three mattresses, uh, with two or three to each mattress and just one toilet, which was basically a hole in the floor, which made me heave because of the smell. <laughs> oh my god, that is f***ing horrible. I'm never going there. <laughs> it's like accidentally break the law and end up in some terrible Batman prison. <laughs> There may be hope for the future as SM Al Tamimi, the founder of the UAE's top law firm, has publicly denounced the law as silly. <laughs> SM, it sounds like you're going to prison allegedly, doesn't it? And claims to be making slow but sure progress in working with the government on reforms. You could see his point as so much time and money get wasted on processing such cases as to cost the courts around $27,000 a pop. God damn. But in the meantime, the website Dubai FAQs has some excellent advice for anyone thinking of visiting the country. Don't. <laughs> just keep your tongues. No, this, that was a lie. Don't, you know, go to look, go to Dubai if you want. Just behave yourself, all right? I, I get Dubai. Like, I get why it's a nice holiday destination. It's just not for me. <laughs> but in the meantime, the website, oh, we read that. Just keep your tongues and hands under control uh, until you're in the privacy of your home or hotel bedroom. And if anyone has something to say about your behavior, whether police, security official, or member of the public, stop whatever it is you were doing that offended them, apologize politely, and thank them for letting you know that your behavior was not appropriate, and say how much you're enjoying the country. Whatever you do, don't start ranting about being right, or how things are different in your own country, or make any sort of criticism of UAE culture and morals. <laughs> oh, God. It just sounds bad, doesn't it? Oh, but you know what is not bad? Look, if you want to start a website about Dubai FAQ, I mean, all right, whatever you're into, mate, do it with today's glorious sponsor, Squarespace. Look, if you want to start a blog, as I just said, maybe Dubai FAQ, a competitor website to Dubai FAQ, although that does sound fairly comprehensive and easy to do, so maybe don't do that. Maybe do, I don't know, another country FAQ. Maybe there's a country you're into and you want to start a website, like telling people how to behave in that country. That'd be nice. Like, and learn about tipping and stuff. Like, there's a lot, it's really confusing. Like, I go to America, I have no idea who to tip. I just assume because it's America, everyone wants to tip. It's like, do you tip a taxi driver? I don't know. You, you have to tip the person who takes your bags in a hotel. It's like, what the f dude? I can carry my own. And then I feel bad. I, it's like, I've got a backpack. I can carry it up myself. But then I'm like, but then the guy wants to earn, like, I don't know. I don't even know how much to tip. A dollar? Five dollars? Ten dollars? Twenty? I literally don't know. There should be a guide. I'm sure there is. I'm just too lazy to look it up. But I mean, look, what are we talking about? Oh yeah, today's sponsor, Squarespace. Look, if you want to do any of that stuff, just do it with Squarespace. They make it super easy to make a website. I've done it with Squarespace. Many people have done it with Squarespace. People are like, hit me up on Twitter, at Simon Whistler if you want to follow me. And they're like, Simon, I made my website with Squarespace. And I'm like, fantastic. It looks so good. But what, you can't make it look bad with Squarespace. You use a template, even if you're designing it from scratch, it's so easy to put it together and make it look good because you can just do whatever you want. I mean, within certain restrictions, so it doesn't look get what I'm getting at. It always looks awesome. Just use a template. It's so easy. Uh, you can also set up a shop, which is fantastic. Maybe you're like, I want to sell. Look, I don't even know. I don't even know what you want to sell, but you can do it with Squarespace. Digital products, physical products, whatever you want. Easy. Use those templates. But there's also lots of other cool stuff you can do on there. Member areas, email campaigns, collect donations, if you're feeling charitable, social sharing. I mean, that feels like a kind of given, doesn't it? It's like, no, you can't share that article that you wrote on Twitter. It's like, that is included, of course, and it's fantastic analytics. So you can know if people are coming and blogging tools, because of course you have blogging tools. Look, when you're ready to start that next project of yours, be it big or small, just do it with Squarespace, blog, shop, website, with the dankest of memes, whatever you want. Squarespace.com forward slash blaze and you'll get 10% of your first purchase of a website or a domain. Squarespace.com forward slash blaze. 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And let's get back to it, shall we? Winnie the Pooh will crush China with his bare hands. Bare hands, get it? Ah! But a boom boom. Oh my god, that was so funny! <laughs>
I like to think that I've gleaned most of my wisdom and philosophical beliefs from consuming the real classics of literature, such as The House at Pooh Corner by A. A. Milne. A world without Winnie the Pooh is barely worth even contemplating. I just bought a Winnie the Pooh book for my kid, and at night, before she goes to bed, we read Winnie the Pooh together. Mostly, she really wants to just skip ahead. So I'm like, okay, well, I guess we're reading a different story now. <laughs> okay, that sounds fine. I wasn't enjoying this one at all. I missed. I, I I like that story. Can we go back? No. Yet, according to some overexcitable reports in the UK press in 2014, the small town of Tusian in Poland has banned all Winnie the Pooh books and toy backpacks. Oh yeah, because he's nude underneath. He's like only wearing a shirt. It's like what the. F I mean, it is weird, but like, a lot of characters in TV, like animal characters, they just have a t-shirt on. It's like, you don't not, not wear any underwear. <laughs> like, the t-shirt was where the decency stopped. Uh, from every school playground, because of his dubious sexuality and his non-gender specific genitalia. What? So if he had a huge cock, it would be okay. <laughs> Powerful, huge, whopping penis. Wow. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> just go back. Winnie the Pooh. A.A. Milner, he's dead now, but whoever is looking after Winnie the Pooh's copyright just goes back to Poland and is like, look, look, we've redrawn Winnie the Pooh with a massive penis. Can, can, he, can he come back in your town now? <laughs> They'll be like, yes, yes, definitely. We just need a gender-specific genitalia. Now we know that he's a man. Definitely a man. Definitely a man. There's got to be weird porn of Winnie the Pooh, right, with a huge cock. There just has got to be. What's that rule? The rule 27 or whatever? Where if, if, if you can think about it, there's porn about it. This is one of those cases. What? In fact, this was charged just largely a load of droppings in the woods. Oh, it wasn't real. The report stemmed from a leaked audio recording of a nutty local council meeting in which the councillors were trying to decide on which famous character should be the face of a new proposed play, town, play area in the town. Things got pretty heated when the name Winnie the Pooh came up as angry councillors began to rage over the fact that the bear was only dressed from the waist up and didn't even own any underpants. Terrible. One councillor reckoned that Pooh Bear was clearly a hermaphrodite, while another started ranting about how A.A. Milne had clearly got a problem with his identity, as he had effectively cut Pooh's testicles off with a figurative razor blade. Holy sh**, this local council meeting, that's smoking crack. Exactly. God damn! I can't help thinking that Disney films would have gone down not quite so well if Pooh had been wandering around the hundred acres. <laughs> with this. With his cock and balls hanging out. <laughs> it's a great mental image though, isn't it? He bends over and it's like looking at the back of a dog as its balls. It's like, Fuck. why do I have to look at that? No! Can't we just cut the balls off the dog so I don't have to look at that? I mean, please. No one has to look at my balls. I'm not walking around with my dick out. Most of the time. <laughs> But of course, the town of Tuzin hasn't really banned the bear. Nobody in their mi right minds would slap a ban on a fictional honey munching bear. I can see what the next line is. Apart from China, obviously. Which, by the way, fuck China. Just wanna make that clear. Fuck China. It's not an outright ban in China. It's more of a targeted attack on free speech. You can still buy poo books and toys and other merchandise pretty much anywhere in the country. Oh, the beautiful 2008 film Christopher Robin was never shown in China, and some claim that that was down to censorship. That might be true, but it could also be argued that China only releases 34 American films every year, and Christopher Robin undeser undeservedly underperformed at the US box office, so it wasn't considered good enough to make the cut. The real problem is that social media users have been ha having fun pointing out how Chinese President Xi Jinping thing looks a bit like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> and he doesn't find the joke very funny. <laughs> uh, it all kicks off when Pooh Bear, sorry, Xi <laughs> Danny, I'm going to get killed with Nova Chuck. <laughs> Visited the US in 2013 and a subsequent photograph of him walking side President Barack Obama drew comparisons. It was him and Tigger, wasn't it? Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. Uh, drew illustrations. Because also Barack Obama does look like Tigger, doesn't he? Uh, I don't know why. I mean, it must just be because of that photo. But he's kind of like tall and thin and I don't know. Like, uh, it just, yeah, he's like a bit lanky like Tigger, isn't he? Uh, walking beside a tall and lanky Tigger. Thank you. Uh, the following year, another photograph of Xi Jinping meeting up with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe drew further comparisons to an illustration of Pooh Bear standing beside a miserable donkey eel. <laughs> really good. The barrage of mocking memes that sprung up on social media were not viewed in a good in good humor by the Chinese government. He felt that this was a serious effort to undermine the dignity of both the presidential office and Xi Jinping, who is meant to be seen as a serious and somber figure at all times, rather than half-dressed talking bear. That's on honey. 
Oh my god, it's just a bit of good humour though, isn't it? Like, I really feel like, I don't know, people point to me that, that I don't know, I've got endless streams of people being like, Ah, Simon looks like this guy. Ah, he looks like Lex Luthor. Ah, he looks like Mr. Clean. All of this stuff or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, kind of, that's pretty funny. Like, alright, I get it. Um, whatever. It's like, but, or like, you know, The Spectator is a UK magazine that draws like cartoon pictures of prime ministers and stuff. And it's like, it's, it's amusing. I, I don't think anyone's like particularly super mega offended by it. It's like someone would draw me with like a massive bald head, giant ass beard, big ears, like glasses and being like, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like, it's like a caricature. It's, it's fine. Chill out. All right. <laughs> In an effort to crack down on the mockery, any mention of poo on the Chinese social networks now gets pulled immediately. Just like Donald Trump and Alex Jones, Winnie the Pooh has been effectively banned from social media, in China at least, and the rest of the world, every time Xi Jinping makes the headlines, Winnie the Pooh starts trending on Twitter. I didn't even know that's great. Years ago, I was Chinese. And in yet another intriguing development, the 2018 role-playing game, Kingdom Hearts 3, features a large cast of Disney characters. But Pooh was mysteriously blurred out of the Chinese release. I don't think there's anything mysterious about that, is there? <laughs> not, a, not in a very convincing way. His little yellow legs are still visible, and you can still interact with the character. It's just that the rest of his body has been clumsily replaced by a weird shimmering orb. <laughs> clumsily replaced by a deep fake Xi Jinping. <laughs> The irony is that the Chinese government ban has only helped flame the fans, f fan the flames mockery and draw even more attention to the fact that Xi Jinping looks a bit like Winnie the Pooh. And now Pooh Bear has become the face of an angry young Chinese rebellion, with recent protesters against Chinese treatment of Hong Kong showing up at rallies wearing Winnie the Pooh masks. Oh no. Yeah, this is the problem. Like, if, if someone's making fun of you and you just try to hide it, it's just, they're just going to be like, so you're really butthurt about this, aren't you? It's like, if you, you know, it's like feeding the trolls. If you're like, you shut your face! Then it's like they're going to be like, oh, I hit a button. Let's continue to press that button savagely for years. Xi Jinping should have at least consulted with wise old Al before making such a rash decision to ban Winnie the Pooh from, Pooh from his neck of the woods. If it just been like, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, me and, uh, me and Barack, yeah, cool, funny, not bad. That would have been it. That would have been it. That would have been it. Retrospect. Hindsight's 2020. Am I right, she? Am I right, she? The Bell Ends Law. I often thought that there should be a specific law against behaving like a knob. Imagine all the fun in getting your neighbor arrested for playing crap music in his garden, or getting a colleague fined for droning on about his last holiday a bit too much, or calling the law on your fellow citizen for eating his crisps too loudly at the bus stop. <laughs> Hello, police. I'm at the bus stop. Jim is eating his crisps really loudly. Why did you call 999? <laughs> what are you doing? What's the emergency? Uh, Beavis is bleeding. Surprisingly, it's actually the Philippines who are leading the way in this regard with their revolutionary bell ends law. I really hope it's the translation for bell ends, like the end of the penis, the, the bit that looks like a bell, because I, I realize not all Americans don't have the term bell end. It means the end of a, of a penis, the bell. Bit. It's also offensive. You'd be like, you bell end. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Absolute bell. And I wouldn't necessarily have expected such a pioneering new law to be implemented in a country where election ties are broken by the drawing of lots and you can still get jailed for offending religious feelings. People under the age of 25 need to seek permission from their parents before getting married. And you can largely get away with killing both your partner and their illicit lover if you catch them in the act. The only consequence is your banishment from the Philippines. Who the f is gonna take you? <laughs> it's like, hi, uh, yeah, welcome. Are you business or pleasure? Well, I got banned from my country for uh, murdering my wife and her lover. Um, so I guess pleasure <laughs> and business? Let's just call it immigration. <laughs> no one's gonna take you. You're gonna be like that man. Other, other hundreds of people, thousands of Filipino people in the world living in airports like the guy in the terminal. Also isn't the Philippines the country where that guy who runs it throws drug dealers out of helicopters? I mean he's pretty serious about dealing with bellends. I mean, I don't like drug dealers who sell hard drugs to people who are like, you know, like fentanyl and <laughs> But like, also, if you're just a drug dealer for weed, it's like, cool, cool, totally fine with that. Don't get thrown out of a helicopter, but you know, fentanyl and <laughs> Don't, don't, just don't. Not, not even once. <laughs> uh, of course, it's not really called the bellend law. Disappointed.
The crime falls under unjust vexation, paragraph 2 of Article 287 of the Revised Penal Code, and it declares that any unjust vexation is punishable with a fine up to 40,000 pesos, or about $825. And each case will be determined on whether the offender's act caused annoyance, irritation, torment, distress, or disturbance to the mind of the person who it was directed towards. In other words, it's technically illegal in the Philippines to be annoying. <laughs> I like this. The problem with the law is that, as pointed out by critics and legal experts over the years, it is pretty vague. Yeah, and one thing you don't want laws to be is vague. Um, or arguably completely meaningless, which essentially just gives the court and the lands the punishment, the permission to fine a slightly annoying person on a whim. Nope, nope, stop talking, go to jail. Oh. Thankfully, there doesn't appear to be too many cases yet of the law being abused by the legal system. It often gets wheeled out as a way of dealing with cases which should have, have more serious consequences such as stalking, groping, or in one instance forcefully covering the face of another person with a piece of cloth soaked in, soaked in chemicals with dizzying effects. I think there should be more than an $825 fine for that. To be honest, shouldn't there? Shouldn't there? Maybe banishment? Maybe getting that airport situation? Maybe the Tom Hanks thing? Another example of the law being used to deal with, can you imagine, it's just, you're cruising through airports, just like, ah, yes, the, the local criminal Filipinos who are stuck here. Hello. I, I, yeah, just, no, 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 just, just transiting through. Please don't murder me. Please, 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 please. No. Another example of the law being used to deal with a more serious criminal offense was a case in 2000 when a man was found guilty of unjust vexation after cutting the electric, water, and telephone lines of somebody else's business without authority and during business hours, uh, during the business owner's peak hours operation. But then there was another more curious example, such as the man who got fired after interrupting a religious ceremony by constructing a barbed wire. F who got fined after interrupting a religious ceremony by constructing a barbed wire fence in front of the chapel. And the most worrying case I could dig out was from 2009 when a woman fell foul of the law after embracing, dragging, and kissing another person in front of her friends. What, what are you up to? Perhaps the Philippines just needs to spend more time on clarifying sensible separate laws instead of having a vague catch-all clause to potentially deal with property destruction, stalking, chemical poisoning, public kissing, and whistling in a tune out a key. Yeah, it sounds like the Phil who are making the laws in the Philippines a bit lazy. It's like, yeah, we just have one vague law for everything. We just decide on a case-by-case -case basis, which, I mean, is also kind of how laws get developed, but you should also have some, like, statutory laws like proper ones. Incidentally, Yoko Ono, oh God, it's been so long since we mentioned Yoko Ono and now I've had to think about her absolutely sh** music, has visited the Philippines on at least seven separate occasions without getting arrested, so work that one out. Really? Really? Yoko Ono's allowed to go out? Why? The Lemonade Stand Wars. Every summer without fail during my, a walk with my dog Poppy, I'm bound to wander past at least a couple of sets of enterprising and enthusiastic kids who set up a charming little cake stand at the end of their driveway. And whilst I always applaud their entrepreneurial spirit and Poppy seems very interested in the products and offer, I can never buy anything as I don't tend to wander around with cash in my pockets in 2021. Lemonade stands aren't quite as popular here in the UK, but they're certainly a heartwarming symbol of a typical childhood summer holiday in America. And they can teach kids the value of working for their dog as well as developing new skills in time management, customer service, mathematics, and ripping off gullible souls with overpriced crap. <laughs> yeah. Then there's just one problem that really pisses on the lemonade bonfire. Lemonade stands are technically illegal in 36 US states, and it's not uncommon for the cops to crack down on the fresh-faced, fledgling, busy pop fraudsters. Is that do cops actually? I get it if it would be like illegal, because it's like, yeah, you're you know you're operating a business without health and safety and all that sort of bullshit. But aren't cops generally like, oh, that's nice, and purchase lemonade? The official reasoning is the violation of a clutch of different laws, including operating a business without a permit, lack of adherence to health codes, and even child labor. Some teary-eyed kids have been forced to shut up shop after being informed by the police that they'll need to have their family kitchens officially inspected and pay for a business license, a peddler's permit, and a food permit before they can legally continue. That's a bit rough when you consider they were only hoping to make about $10 on a warm Sunday or Saturday afternoon. 2011 witnessed an unprecedented blitz on lemonade stands by the police during the Register's annual Great Bicycle Ride across Iowa. The city of Coralville had implemented a two-day ordinance which required all vendors to have permits before the race kicked off, and the police went nuts, closing down every unlicensed lemonade stand they clasped their eyes onto, even if it wasn't being run by a four-year-old. Uh, 
Even if it was being run by a four-year-old and a teddy bear from the end of a driveway. This is crazy. Just let them do their stupid kid thing. Why not? Why do you have to be such dicks about it? Bobby Nelson, a mother of six distraught young children, revealed how she had laughed in the face of a police officer who came knocking on the door, insisting that she fork out $400 for a permit to cover the cost of the stand being run by her kids. Yeah, you'd be like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, good one. Uh, did, you, did you have a problem? Did you want some lemonade? Uh, the kids will take care of you. And they'll be like, no, no, no. I'm serious. Don't make me take my massive gun out. Um... <laughs> WHERE'S THE FOUR HUNDRED DOLLARS, BOBBY?! I never broke the law! I AM THE LAW! But the poor kids weren't in the mood for laughing. They couldn't understand why their lemonade stand was being shut down by, by the police and believed it was because the signs they'd put it, their heart and soul into weren't good enough. Oh, that's so sad. Even comedian Jerry Seinfeld found himself on the wrong side of the law when he set up a lemonade stand with his young son and a couple of his son's friends to help raise funds for Jerry's wife's non-profit organization, Baby Buggy. Yeah, Jerry, just be like, here's the four hundred dollars. You're mad rich, yeah? It's extremely rich. A nosy neighbor called the police. Oh, f off. Who's calling the police on Jerry Seinfeld and his kids having a lemonade stand? You're an absolute bell end. The Philippines could have a word with you. Uh, a nosy neighbor called the police and Jerry was ordered to close down the charitable venture after being unable to show them a permit. It does seem bizarre that local governments uh, and authorities in 36 states can't just turn a blind eye to the little kid trying to do something quite industrious and resourceful, but the good news is that every passing summer sees at least one or two more states taking the decision to legalize children's lemonade stands. Yeah, but also if you legalize it, aren't you going to run into problems? Because then it will be like, you know, people abuse that the loophole in the law and it's like, yeah, do you have a permission for that hot dog stand? Like, 30 year old dude like who's clearly bought like a van and selling some really shady looking meat that he probably bought somewhere like dodgy and he's like no 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 because i'm uh, this is technically a lemonade stand it's like you dick stop abusing the law but people will because as we've discussed people are dicks so in about 20 years from now lemonade stands could be a legal right across america but then some rough little kid will start dropping cyanide in the glasses of lemonade and we'll be right back to square one and then little cyanide will have to go home crying to his idiot parents wait i assume cyanide would be a name for a girl this has been an episode of business blaze brought to you by squarespace thank you squarespace legends and uh, thank you for watching see you next time now I really want some lemonade. Years ago, I was Chinese.